What is up, podcast? What is up, YouTube? And especially my Instagram followers, this is the Raise Place Podcast Network. We have another amazing show for you, as always. But first of all, before I even start, before I even get crazy started, and I see you guys in the stream, go ahead and put the chats in the stream. Don't worry. Put all the crazy chats in the stream. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning and this afternoon all over the world. This is an international show, like I was telling the gentleman in the background in the studio. This is an international podcast going all over the real my friends check it out i want to thank my patreon family my patreon family they're hitting it patreon.com forward slash race flays if you are interested in supporting the channel that's the way to do it patreon.com forward slash raise flaves if you like what you hear or see that is the way to support the channel they're getting the five dollar level they're getting pictures in the background i put a few pictures in the background of my patreon channel creating some pictures for you some video outtakes some audio outtakes put them on the patreon channel those are only for patreon users the 15 dollar level they're sending me questions they know who's on the show before the show even gets filmed they're sending me questions and then i'm actually using some of those questions in the show the $35 level, they're in the studio with me virtually just like my guests are today, and they're asking questions in the private chat. It's pretty freaking awesome. Now, here's the thing. If you're a business like Convoy Nails, you might want to put the $100 level and then have your salon name or whatever your business is every single time I do the show. You never know, but that's the $100 tier. Check it out on patreon.com forward slash race flaves who we got in the stream oh yes it's ramonski as always in the background hopefully everything sounds good let's freaking go is what he's saying l f g we say it like this on race flaves let's freaking go now today we're gonna go because my guest is freaking awesome this guy is the superstar of bourbon please help me welcome mr Derek to the show Hey, man. Good morning. We are excited to have you, my friend. The audience is cheering for you. They love you. They know that this guy is the expert of bourbon, straight lines in bourbon, my friend. How are you doing, Derek? I'm doing great. Expert. I couldn't be further from that. But, uh, <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I wanted to show you what I'm drinking today. This is a 35 year bourbon that I'm drinking today. This is 30. You can see the dark is. color. Yeah. This is what <laughs> happens when you, when you, when you, when you, um, ferment bourbon, uh, the cherries or whatever, the strawberries that you guys use to make the whiskey. This is the color that you kind of get. It's a beautiful, beautiful dark color. You're spot on, man. I love it. It looks effort. delicious. Absolutely. It actually is Snapple. <laughs> it is a raspberry Snapple tea. Raised Flaves does not drink. So you guys might be thinking in the studio, you like in the audience, like how is Raised Flaves going to interview this guy who is an expert at whiskey? Well, one, number one, Derek is not just an expert at whiskey. He has many different things that he does. One of the things he does is he's, he mows, he cuts grass. And my friends, I used to smoke a lot of grass in high school. So I am a total expert at that. There is not a problem. I'm going to be able to handle that part. But the second part of this, the whiskey part, I cannot handle. So I called in one of my friends, my great friends, an expert at whiskey, Mr. Matthew the Jeweler. Matthew the Jeweler, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. Definitely not an expert, just an avid drinker. Avid. Avid drinker. <laughs> yes. This man has drinking all over the world, my friends. When he comes to Los Angeles, he's in PA right now. He's always all over the world, Morocco, Egypt, uh, Italy, all over the world. This guy's a world traveler um, because he's, he's Matthew the jeweler. So obviously he needs to travel. But the thing is, when he comes to LA, we, me and my wife love him, his wife, Nicole, we hang out, we go have a pizza at maybe the Poets Garden in Uptown Whittier, which is a great place. Yep. But inevitably, we may end up at the Raqqa whiskey bar which is in a killer place here in woodier it's strictly whiskey that's all they freaking sell there right it's a great place right 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 matthew oh man it's an amazing place uh, i mean that uh, i wish i had all of those whiskeys just sitting in my uh my cabinet here but uh you know there's only so much that i'm allowed to spend on uh my wife has limited my uh my whiskey spending budget yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. The worst oh, restrictions. Man. The worst. It's the worst. It's the worst. She, yeah. she has no problem getting a bunch of shoes, but but shit, I can't get any. Oh shoot, I mean, I can't get any. I can't get any whiskey. The whiskey <laughs> restriction is real, my friends. It happens. Yeah. It's crazy. Derek has a huge community uh, on the whiskey side of things. Um, man, when I said I was having straight lines and bourbon, it was like having Montley Crew on the show. I was getting all kinds of follows. I was getting hits all over stories. They are excited about today. Straight lines and bourbon on the show, my friend. It's awesome. But we got our expert, Matthew the Jeweler. We are ready to go. We're going to ask Derek some questions about what he does. Derek, first of all, Straight Lines and Bourbon has over 3,000 followers on Instagram. What is this channel about, my friend? <sighs> what it's about, I, I tell you what, if you follow me, it's generally me posting a picture of bourbon or mowing my yard. Um, it's kind of where where i'm at but uh i guess it kind of it started a couple of years ago i just turned over like my two-year anniversary i could say a lot of it started during covid i think most folks did similar things uh just kind of being cooped up in the house um just not being able to see folks they started to reach out um reach out on uh social media and that's really where it started and two years later a ton of people out there that i've connected with and interacted with it's been it's been really cool it's been cool so That's it's just awesome. a fun it's a it's a fun page nothing serious um but i do try to do try to interact with everybody that's out there it's awesome, man. I see you guys going live all the time, talking about whiskey. You got killer shots of the uh, of the the bottles. It's an interesting community because there's a lot of them, and they they all are experts in their field. Uh, in the uh, what's a what? Let me show you what, what what's up with the grass thing, though. Let me show. Let me share. Let me share people what I'm talking about when I'm talking about grass. Hold on a second. Let me share my screen real quick. Yeah, and yeah. disclaim di yeah disclaimer that the grass is is uh, is this you know, is yeah it's lawns it's, it's lawn yeah 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 it's yeah. it's lawn so we're talking is this your backyard or what Derek yeah it's my backyard and those are the straight lines um, I know folks kind of may get that confused when they see straight lines and bourbon it's, uh, it's we're talking about grass here folks. Yeah, when they see a rock star like Derek, they're thinking grass number one, and then when they and they when they hear straight lines and bourbon, they're they're thinking they're doing coke and 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 whiskey. So, so uh, you know, and and it, it, it you, when you see a rock star like Derek, you, you that's obviously what you think. You immediately think that oh there's some coke going down and and some whiskey <laughs> drinking. Um, so, but this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about straight lines on the grass, the lawn. This is what fascinates me. This is my part. Uh, when we get to the whiskey part, of course, Matthew's going to jump in. But this is my part right here. This trip, when I saw this, I was fascinated. Like this, like because when you go to the baseball field, right? You see the baseball field. Somehow they make the grass perfect. They got all these lines in them. Uh, same thing for football, maybe. Of course, for golf, they they have different uh, ways of making the grass higher on one end and, and really fine on the putting green. This is the same kind of thing, I would assume. How do you make these lines and, and these designs in the grass, Derek? Oh, it's uh, it's it's not too challenging. Obviously, you're gonna mow whatever pattern you want, north, south, east, west, whatever, whatever you decide to choose. You can see some diagonals that I have there. But yeah. um, what what really what really gets it? The secret to being able to showcase really great lines is to create shadows so you want to have the sun at your back so i'm technically standing Ooh. on like i'm standing on my shed that's out back where the lawnmower's at so i'm slightly elevated and then obviously uh -huh. kind of shooting down the sun is usually usually over my over my shoulder and that's where you get like the the dark pattern if i took this from the other angle like from the top of my roof of my house it would be a totally different perspective it'd be like what what am i looking at i don't understand um so i do follow quite a few lawn care and lawn enthusiasts out there um and that's kind of a tip i picked up along the way because i used to shoot it from the top of my house going like out towards the shed and uh yeah totally totally a game changer so keep the sun at your back if you're trying to do this 
sun at your back. So then, so if you shot it the other way, you don't get, so the shadows is really the whole thing. The shadows is what makes it and yep. gives the eye that, that impression that there's these clean lines, the shadows. Yeah. And I mean, and, the, li the lines are clean. They're very clean. It's just a matter of where you're standing, how, how it's impacted for sure. Wow. That's incredible. And, and yeah. you, you, there's a, contest or something for it. it says right here in the in the in the description this is my official entry to got glaw of the week there's some sort of contest with this or what oh um keep off the grass keep off the grass is a uh keep off the grass a lot of oh, i tell you what you look at you start looking look at, at that and i'm an amateur compared to some of these dudes there are some folks out Man, there that are, that are just that are wild what's this backpack yeah. thing do you see are you seeing this backpack thing yeah, it looks like it's probably just like a. It's either probably a, a blower or some type of fertilizer or, or like a spare. seed. It looks like a seed blower or something yeah. like that. Huh? Yeah, it, the, the images are pretty small on my phone, but yeah, it's probably what it is. That's crazy, man. Do you need yeah. a specific machine to get to do to do this? Um, no, I just got a I got a zero turn mower. It's it's pretty pretty simple. My yard isn't enormous um there's some folks out there that have some like real the real deal stuff um yeah i, mean, I saw some mine, guy mine this big simple. uh like square like it didn't look like the home depot mower it was not a coyote or anything <laughs> like that at all it was yeah. like a it was like a giant square mower it was not only wide but it was tall it had handles of uh -huh. course but it had like this lever like you could like adjust it. Like it was like going to freaking <laughs> blast off in outer space or something. Uh, is, that, is that like the pro level? Is that like getting, That's, getting a Ferrari uh, of uh, lawnmowers there? I tell you what, some of this stuff. Yeah. It rivals like the price of, of vehicles. Um, Honestly, that's not. I'm not at that level. I don't even. I wouldn't even have a place to store it. To be honest with you, it'd be just. It'd be <laughs> too big. It'd be too big for me. That's crazy, Not, dude. Yeah. That's well, awesome. Hey, listen, Listen, I could show you my lawn right now if you want to come down from Michigan because I can't – I've got so many dead spots in my front lawn. You know what? I'm actually going to show it to you. Show them the lawn. Let's, let's see the lawn, Matthew. Uh, shoot. How do I – Oh, you can't do can it? I, just I don't know. Flip can the little – well, yeah, well, I don't know how to flip it, but I'll just – I'll here. This is my front <laughs> There you go. My front lawn. like my mom. You don't know how to flip the camera. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> see? It's a disaster, man. It's an oh. absolute disaster. Holy moly! There's some dead spot. You need a. You need a. You need that backpack with the with the seedings yeah. to blow, blow them all out there. And, and those are fun. Something because it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. What's yeah, up, it's, Chops? It's a disaster. And of course, my 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 dog doesn't help at all either. Because nah, you know my dog's yeah. Fertilizing uh, you can't have a dog. Ways. Do you have a Do you have a dog, Derek? I don't. But um, there's a stray cat that kind of has been <laughs> homed by. Us, us, meaning my wife and two kids. Oh um, my god! It's it's she's her name is Steel, um, Steel. like the, Steel, like the chainsaw brand. She does like purr and hum like constantly, but um, like a chainsaw, yeah, like a chainsaw. But uh, she came around about eighteen months ago, and she's just kind of like the neighborhood cat. She's in and out. We bring her in the winter throw some food out but other than that she's out chasing squirrels and catching mice and leaving them on the doorstep it's crazy yeah. one of the one of the dangers of having a beautiful lawn like that you cannot have animals right you can't have a cat running around uh, spraying their urine all over the grass like palm olive you'll get a freaking hole or a design that you don't want in the grass uh, going against the grain of the lines possibly or a big giant round spot like matthew has with his dog animals are, 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 are a nuisance in the, in the lawn game. Is that right, Derek? <sighs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to comment. In <laughs> so just, just Derek loves animals so much. He will not even talk negatively about animals. That, that is a, that is a great man. My friend, that is, that is a good heart. And to, I want to welcome uh, chops, chops to the show. The reason why I met Straight Lines and Bourbon, by the way, is Chop. Chop, Chop did the shirt. Show him the shirt that that Chop did. Oh, hi. Right here. There you go. 
Chop is in my art department. He works for raceflaves.com in the art department. He created that 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 shirt right there, Straight Lines and Bourbon's logo. Created the design from ground up, from zero, from nothing. You want to design, you got to get onto farmhouse, Tilted Farmhouse on Instagram. He'll create your, your logo. He'll create your shirts. He's created a logo for me and a killer shirt that's coming out in October. It's going to be amazing. Uh, this guy's a killer, killer, killer artist. Uh, uh, chop. We call him chop. He's, he's a tilted farmhouse on Instagram. He, the reason being he has a tilt, literally tilted farmhouse in his land in a, in an area where I can't mention because it is like a speakeasy. So there's an actual bar with whiskey and beer in this place and you can go there and hang out with chop. And that's where I met Derek. He told me about Derek. He's got, you got to check this guy out. And I was like, well, what the, what the, what the heck is this? And it's like whiskey. Well, what am I going to do with it? But then I saw the lawns and I was just tripping out. I was like, Whoa, crazy. Look at this guy's making his lawn like that. I always want to know how to do the, how they do that on the baseball fields and everything like that. So chops in the house. What's up, my man. What's up, my man. What's up, Ramon. Sir chops is in the house. What's up guys. Thanks for joining this morning this afternoon, wherever you're at all over the world, where if you're just joining us, we are with Straight Lines and Bourbon, Derek from Straight Lines and Bourbon, the expert at bourbon and cutting your lawn, not doing lines, not doing straight lines, but actually lines on the lawn. This is a family show, by the way, I want you guys to know that. Matthew, the jeweler is also in the house, my co-host, the expert at drinking all over the world. This man is drinking in Los Angeles. This man is drinking in Morocco. This man is drinking in Spain, Italy, um, possibly parts of Africa that we can't mention today on the show, but here he <laughs> is, Matthew, the jeweler. Uh, and it's, it, it's just, a, it's just a fun time here on Twitch, right guys? Yeah. Yeah, Grab yeah. Well, time. I mean, you're basically just making me sound like an alcoholic, but you know, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> well, the show is ah. the show is an alcohol show, so you can be an no, alcoholic right now, <laughs> like you like just for the show, like just for the hour. You can be an alcoholic; it's not a problem. This is a straight lines and bourbon show. You can do whatever you want, but but okay. after we have to like sober, like go back to our real lives. Real lives. Yeah, yeah. Because chops you know, did. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, chops asked how many bottles are consumed per week kind of goes with the conversation we're having and i, I would say there, it, i don't kill a bottle each week uh that would just be that'd be insane and i don't drink every day either i do have a pretty decent size collection but i'll just generally just sip on one or two maybe every couple days it's not uh it's not something that i'm like hitting every night oh well, yeah. that's, well, that's a that's Usually. very <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a very humble you know, uh, I will say every day, uh, I like a good whatever. So I, I progress, you know, I start with gin during the day and then uh, go to a little bit, something, you know, something maybe a little heavier in the afternoon. Uh, and then in the evening, I conclude it with a, with a nice scotch. So that's, I love that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. And since we're being honest and we are in the man cave, this is the virtual man cave. We can be honest. Nobody can hear us. Our wives can't hear us at all. They'll never see this. Absolutely. Nobody watches the oh. show. So we're good. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. So so yeah. so I'll, so I'll be honest. I I used to drink just like Matthew is is describing right now. I would start off at the at the at the bar at the beer bar, drink plenty of beer from three all the way till maybe uh, nine o'clock at night, and then end up at a at a steakhouse, a nice steakhouse with some whiskey, bourbon, scotch, possibly a nice, and just sip on it like Derek does every once in a while. Sip on it, and uh, you know it's a different thing you're sipping on it like derek talked is talking about what derek what's the difference between bourbon and like a scotch and there i sounds like there's another thing is there just the two or is there more no a lot of it just comes down to um kind of the grains that are used and that are available depending upon where you're at so bourbon you're going to need at least 51 percent corn if you're over in drinking a scotch i don't know a ton about scotch but a lot of it is based upon whatever grains they have available at the time um so that's that's really kind of what it what it boils down to um, so the grains yeah. what are you talking about like the the what do they make it out of wheat like beer it's like corn barley okay. rye um the fourth one as well that i'm botching right now of course being on being on live i'm not gonna <laughs> not, not gonna not gonna answer that uh 
completely accurately, but that's really that's really what it, what it comes down to is what that mash bill is, as as they call it. And um, each one is each one's different, each one's unique. And then you put it into a barrel, you age it, and out comes the out comes the juice. Hell yeah, that's crazy. So depending on what the ingredients are, you get a scotch or you get a bourbon or maybe if you yeah. mess it up, you might get juice like me. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, like 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 generally here in the US, obviously there's a huge stockpile of corn, I guess talking historically. So that's really what was available. So folks that came over knew how to distill and they knew that knew they knew the grains that they needed. And just whatever was available at the time, that's what they used. That's, and and a lot of it too is crazy. is uh, is also about region uh, as well, right? I mean, when it comes down to it, Scotch is really just in Scotland, and yeah, bur- and bourbon oh. is really just Kentucky. Is that correct? Uh, you can do bourbon anywhere. I think Kentucky is done, or Louisville has done a really good job of maybe marketing that. It's a kind of a misnomer. Um, I would say, I mean, bourbon can be made anywhere in the U S okay. it doesn't have, to, it doesn't it, have to be like bourbon County or anything like that, or like champagne, wherever, you, where, where that's made. Yeah. It can be anywhere. Well, that's interesting. Cause it, it's all whiskey really by classification, but then, you mm-hmm. know, there's because, uh, Tennessee, you know, like Jack Daniels is, they just call it Tennessee, Tennessee whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. 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 Wow. Crazy. It's, it, but it has a different flavor. Is that what it is? Like bourbon tastes different than scotch? It it does. Yeah. Uh, bourbon is more sweet. Scotch is more beaded. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And, and, crazy. And, 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 and also too, like with scotch, it's also based on region too. You know, I mean, if you have the highlands, lowlands, or if you go out to the islands and things like that, I mean, it's a very, very different uh, taste and flavor and, um, which I find fascinating, but I don't know. I don't know a lot about bourbon, but I, is it similar based on you know the region in which it's made that you would but, get a different taste? Um, a lot of the taste and flavors really come from the barrel and the aging okay. process, and then the environment that it's in. So you can do you can do something in Kentucky, and you know you're you're, you're using Kentucky water. That environment is going to be different than say Texas. Where, you know, you have heat fluctuations, different different water that's going into it. It just it's it's it really is um, about um, kind of those uh, ingredients coming together. And you push the you push the the juice into the barrel, and then it comes out, and that's where you get the with the expansion. And um, this is getting pretty scientific, by the way. Dude, no, no, <laughs> it goes no, into the wood and comes out of the wood, and you know that's where it gets that brown color to it and then just the, it, that's kind of where the taste comes from at that point point. And, and you i noticed on your page you had one that was like an extremely old bourbon which i guess i never thought that you could have that old i think it, it correct me if i'm wrong but i thought it was like a 125 years or something like that i mean it was ridiculous on how proof oh proof yeah proof would be proof would be i don't have like age like aged bourbons i think my oldest is 15 one oh, okay. 15 year but proof wise absolutely um okay. i have some that are in the in the 130s that are oh, well wow. yeah so like when they dump it they to get a lower proof they add water to it um but when you add water to it you kind of dilute the flavor so personally if you're going to start out exploring bourbon or any spirit like that 80 90 proof it's been watered down so it's yeah it's easier to drink although i've seen like new folks try it and they're like oh my god this is <laughs> difficult but for yeah. myself the higher you start to get higher proof anywhere between like a 105 115 is kind of a sweet spot and then you start to get above that and which i like above that that's where like you'll feel <laughs> feel a burn uh with the high yeah. alcohol content yeah well, and I think, you know, the, the, with bourbon, I, I think it's a taste of, it, it's an acquired taste, right? It's not something that you're just going to jump into. It's something that you have to kind of cultivate over time and really figure out what, uh, you know, what that, that taste and that flavor is. But because whiskey, like bourbon is U.S. based where scotch is, you know, Scotland, um, I, the regulations um, 
are, are very unique. So I'm originally Canadian and, you know, our beer in Canada is a lot stronger than what is imported here to the United States. And one time I was at, you know, I was in Scotland and I was having a scotch and he asked if I was American. I said, no, no, I'm Canadian American, but Canadian. And he's like, oh, he's like, all right, well, in that case, I'll bring out the real stuff. And he's like, we sell this stuff to the tourists, but this is real scotch. And he pulled it out and it was a completely different Ooh. flavor, same yeah. name, but, um, you know, it was definitely a, a little bit more of a punch and, and definitely had a flavor on, on the front, the back, and just like, uh, it was incredible. And I was like, wow, why, why don't you guys sell it in the States? And they said, we can't, could due to regulation. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're more of a Scotch guy than Matt, right? I'm definitely, yeah, definitely Scotch, which was an acquired, you know, acquired taste over time. I, I lived over there for about three and a half years, and um, oh, nice. over there, uh, men don't drink. Uh, we went to a lot of weddings, but men don't drink uh, champagne; uh, they drink okay. Scotch. So after going to all the weddings, at first I was like, "Oh, it's horrible." Uh, by the tenth wedding, I was like, "This is awesome," <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, and then just kind of uh, acquired it from there, but then there's just so much history and there's so much that's going on and that goes into it. Um, and, and it's crazy how the prices can vary, you know, based upon aging and, uh, you know, just like the process and how old the distillery is and the names and all this stuff. And I'm just like, this is insane. So they really, I, I give it to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I give it to you for all the bourbon that you've got. I can see your cabinet in the back. I mean, that's, that's like yeah. a good collection everybody's that looking at that 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 shelf on 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 the feed everybody's tripping out on your bourbon oh, wall man God, they're, yeah, they're going it's, crazy it's such a bad setup <laughs> guys it's so bad <laughs> i even I, uh, I, I got stuff on the floor it's just it's <laughs> that's a passion that's your passion man that's I your passion for bourbon i gotta figure something out better than what this is <laughs> it's everywhere <laughs> it is it is everywhere crazy it's everywhere. Crazy. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for joining the stream. They are in it. Ramon did a raid. His channel jumped over into my channel. The girls are all here. My girls are here. Ocean Dreams Beauty, Starfile and Nels, Painting Polish. All my girls are in the feed. Uh, some Canadian fans of Matthews. All, all your Canadian friends are there in the in the in the chat as well, Matthew. Uh, everybody here to see this killer talk that's going on on bourbon. We're getting deep here, Crystal Glitter Bug. We're getting deep here, Oceans. We're getting deep here, Pain. Everybody deep into the bourbon talk this is awesome um this is amazing keep it going guys let's talk a little bit more deeper about these things the different flavors um the different flavors the different processes like matthew was talking about all alludes to or ends up being a higher price point so there's i mean just like a nice shoe just like a nice beer there's different prices uh how do they figure that out uh, derek it's a great question. Um, I would say in the last two years, in uh, prices have just gone through the roof. And I wouldn't even say like retail prices. I would say secondary is probably the big driver of that. And so what I mean by secondary is you have a limited amount of certain bottles. A lot of it is driven by like Buffalo Trace, I would say. Um, it's kind of where it started, where you have like Pappy Van Winkle is probably like the most known um, higher end bourbon. What's what's but you said there. Buffalo Trace? What what is that? Is Buffalo that a brand? Trace is Buffalo Trace is a brand. It's also a distiller. It's owned by Sazerac Company, I believe. And Sazerac is an alcohol company. They make a lot of different spirits along the way. But so Buffalo does it kind Trace, of start like it kind of starts from there? Like this big brand kind of. Well, they, yeah, Everybody they acquired, watching it. They acquired. They acquired. They acquired them. Buffalo Trace is in uh, Louisville. It's a huge distillery. Um, tons of people line up outside to try to get some of the allocated bottles that they release out of the distillery. You think no of, think of stuff like yeah, like like Blanton's is a big one, which is funny because it's kind of a a running joke in the bourbon community. It's it's a it's a fifty dollar bottle. It's 90 proof. There's nothing like too special about it, but it's got like this cool topper and I'll, I'll show it. $50 bottle we're talking about here. But, but the thing mm -hmm. is, is like folks will, I can't believe I'm showing this, but folks will buy it strictly for this, this dumb, this, this damn topper. What's that one called? It's Blanton's. 
Blanton's in the house. Anyways, anyways. Blanton sponsor the show. Don't don't be afraid. Blanton. Do not spend. <laughs> do not do not spend. Do not spend over a hundred dollars for this thing. It's it's not worth it. Um. Yeah. So like okay. So like getting back to like the secondary stuff. So folks can't get it, and then so somebody would buy it. And be like, hey, I'll give this. You know, they'll buy it for fifty bucks, and they'll be like, hey, I'll sell this to you for a hundred, and like people will buy it. And so like there's like, this huge market out there for this inflated bourbon. So well, you're asking like minute. retail prices. You can well, buy. Even, oh, go ahead. Or, go ahead, Matthew. Well, no, I was going to say Buffalo Chase is is one of those ones that are really hard to get now. I mean, and, especially yeah. in this state. You know, this yeah. state is almost like Canada when it comes to, you know, we have the liquor control board in Canada, but here it's run by the state. And I, I'm a personal fan. My default is McAllen 18 mm -hmm. um, and for, for single malt. And there are times that it's been sold out and months before I could ever get it back. And, I, you know, yeah. Buffalo Trace is kind of one of those deals. Yeah, no, it is. And it's just, it's, it's crazy the last couple of years how it's gone. But so yeah, so like, you know, there's the retail price and then that goes through the distributor and ends up at the store, which the consumer pays. But if there's a shortage of it, and you have all these folks buying it and you really want it. Supply and demand folks are going to like secondary folks, folks like my folks like us here may say, hey, I got this, but it's going to cost you a hundred bucks. Right or wrong, that's just what happens. Um, so, yeah, there are there are there are some bourbons out there that are extremely inflated. My rule of thumb, my rule of thumb, if you're buying a bourbon, whichever one it is, here we go. I, I say $10 per year that it's aged. So example, Ooh. a seven year, a seven okay. year bourbon, bourbon or rye should cost you around $70 in general. So if you're out there looking and you see somebody saying, Hey, I got this six or seven year bourbon and I'm going to sell it to you for two hundred dollars i would probably in general i would question it now there are some that you may want to pay up for to get um, but by and large 40 to 60 bucks a lot of it is sourced out of mgp products um, midwest grain products out of indiana and it's a lot of it is the same it really is you just kind of have to know what you're looking for but wow. yeah, if you're starting, I probably wouldn't recommend spending over a hundred dollars on bourbon. I would find somebody, follow people on Instagram, see what they're, see what they're drinking. And a lot of it, a lot of it really is in that 50 ish dollar price range. Now I do have some back here that are expensive and that I have paid up for, but I thought at the time it was worth it. So, well, 10, 10, bucks per, that, 10 bucks per year. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a, that's the biggest challenge, right? When you're trying to get into it and you think it's like other product where it's like, Oh, the more I pay, the better it is. And mm. you know, uh, it, that's not always true. I, I ended yeah. up trying, um, <clears throat> I have a friend of mine that has an amazing whiskey and scotch collection. And so one night we decided to be connoisseurs. Um, and you know, we sampled all of this amazing, amazing scotch that I don't have. And he had the McAllen M and he had another one. So the McAllen M, I think, is uh, retails for about five thousand dollars a bottle, and then Jeez. there was this other exclusive one that was about seventy five hundred dollars a bottle. When we, why we were sampling them, and you know, I got to sample that uh, those two really expensive ones. I will still say McAllen eighteen for the uh, for the value, the taste, and everything is hands hands down better than the really expensive stuff. But some people. And I'm sometimes like this pretentious, you know, that I want to have that big bottle. But when it comes down to taste and what you're going to do every day, uh, or m maybe every other day, uh, you want to make sure that it's a good value with the taste that matches. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, the Macallan 18 is fantastic. I've, I've had some Macallan. Mostly it's been like 12 year. Um, yeah just easier easier to get but for the yeah. most part like that at least for bourbon wise that six seven year maybe the 12 is really kind of the sweet spot you start getting older than that and that stuff is sitting in the barrel for years and yeah it yeah. starts to take on more of an oaky flavor or you just kind of lose you lose some of those complex flavors out yeah. of it the longer it sits now uh, it's, i'll it, could be more expensive if you're talking 
20 plus years, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, I'll show you this one that I've got here that my wife got me for Christmas one year. And this is McAllen Reflections. So the, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to turn around this stupid camera. So it should be like a little circular arrow thing on the bottom corner yeah. of your phone. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just going to turn it around this way. So here, this is it here. And then can you see it? Cause I can yes. see if you, Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. legit. I've seen that. I haven't like seen it on social media for sure. That's yeah. awesome. So that's, that's really nice. But then she was complaining that I wasn't drinking it fast enough. <laughs> so she's like, she's like, Hey, why, why is it just sitting there? I said, babe, you can't, you can't just, you know, drink it willy nilly here. And a little, uh, sip. <laughs> a little sip every now and then. A little sip uh, and move on. But uh, yeah, so, but she got me that. And that's probably the most expensive one that I've got in the house. Um, and it's, you know, really good. But then um, we were sampling it and uh, my son, and I won't say how old he is. He's the one that actually recognized there was a chalk, there was a chocolate flavor to it. Oh, really? And I, was, I, was, I was like, what, really? And sure enough, uh, I took it again and I was like, oh my God. And then, of course, and then I look it up and then it said, you know, on the back end, it's going to have a chocolate flavor. And I was like, that's crazy. Dang. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm starting to think his palate's more, uh, <laughs> well, more he's a, he's a, he's mind. a cook, man. Your son is a great cook oh, as well. He's yeah, so he knows yeah, what's up. Yeah. yeah, he definitely does. But so, yeah, that's, uh, that was kind of the, um, uh, you know, the challenge of learning scotches and then trying to, you know, because when you're drinking sophisticated drinks, you want to feel sophisticated. <laughs> you want to know what the heck you're talking you about. You have to have a sweater like like you're wearing, or you can't you can't enjoy it. What a weather at all. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's my style. It's a, good look, it's a good looking sweater though, oh, and yeah, a beard exactly. like all of us. Yeah, yeah, it's a beard. You gotta have the sweater and the beard, or you cannot enjoy bourbon. I'm just putting it out there for the for the pee. So you yeah, guys, and, you want to learn the gray hair, stuff. the gray hair too. Oh, yeah, the, gray, hair. the grays work. Yeah. The grays yeah, do it. Yeah, the I'm grays do. Two, I, I'm 21. You know, and but, baldness. Uh, yes, Derek, bring in the baldness. Yeah, yeah. I, the ball, I, I yeah. won't show mine. I won't show mine. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. horrible. Leave your headphones on. It's very Oh, what? Looks like Matthew lost. Oh, there he is. There he is. No, back. My, my alarm is, I don't know why at 1230, my alarm's going off saying, wake up. And I'm like, I'm already awake. What the hell? <laughs> well, I'm sure that that happens. I'm sure you set that up because if you, if you pass out somewhere, it could, your phone will tell you to wake up. Yeah. Right? That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. your, that's your, that's your uh, mid party. Wait. Like wake up. Yeah. Wait, wake up for another shot. Wake up for another shot. Get another shot. Get another shot. <laughs> the, the shot will help. Get another shot. It'll yeah, help you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man it's, it's a nice it. night cap man it'll help you sleep <laughs> <laughs> man uh, ocean dreams is in the stream she she had a, a she went to the jameson uh tasting she had a great time e eating the uh food as well on the tastings i guess there's always food there or something like that you know about jameson uh derek i've had some yeah i've had some it's been nice. it's been a while yeah is that a good one yeah i i it's been so long honestly it's like i can remember like Halloween, taking Jameson shots, probably back wow. in 2006 or seven. I'm a basketball so, player too, so we called it Antoine Jameson. Uh, Antoine Jameson. Antoine nice. Jameson's. Antoine Jameson shots. Yeah. Hell yeah. She has another question. What makes something a single malt? I think that's the that's the 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 grain that they use, just a single malt. That's the other grain, by the way. The single malt. malt? I think that's what is a malt. Yeah, it's a, a malt. malt. Yeah, malt. Yeah. Right. Or is that like a barley, a malted barley? Or I, yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's also, like that. I think there's a wheat too, isn't there? A, a malted wheat or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but definitely but all, part of yeah. it too, like, you know, my, uh, so that's the other thing too, and I'm glad she brought that up, is about, you know, single malts versus blends. So with scotch, you know, you can get a blend, like Johnny Walker is a blended whiskey. Um, and then you've got this, the single malt, which is the Macallan. Um, and there's big, there's price differences with it. And some like true avid, you know, uh, drinkers would say that they're not going to pay for, um, you know, a blended whiskey, uh, for an you know, exorbitant amount, what, what they'll pay maybe for a single malt. 
Um, but I don't personally, I'm not a hundred percent sure why I, I, you were talking earlier about the dilution. Do you think the blend has anything to do with the diluting it a bit or? Ooh, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I know that there's a lot of, in the bourbon world, there's a lot of blends that, that go on just between different barrels. Um, right. But that's, that's the extent of my knowledge of it. Okay. Yeah, I just th I find it fascinating because you know the the single malt and um, and then you can get the, the you know the rum casts and the, the, all of these different things to bring out different flavors, and you get it's just such an, an amazing experience when you start to realize wow all of that goes into it still not justifiable for a seventy five hundred dollar bottle but you know I mean um, it's it's that taste that flavor mm -hmm. and but but I really do call it it's it's a, a sophisticated drink um all whiskeys are I, I really feel like it's not something that you want to take to a party and pop back shots with it yeah is it because I, of the glass is it because it's always in a nice glass like this that it's sophisticated it's a very nice glass though you Ooh. know actually it's funny that you say that because if you go to some of these bars and um i just have a tendency like you know if i if you're at a club or whatever and they have the plastic cups and they're giving everybody these plastic cups. But if you order scotch, they actually give it to you in a real glass. And I'm like, yeah, that's see, that's that's called baller status. <laughs> baller status, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, so yeah, yeah. so yeah. So if 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 you get whiskey in a can, that's not a good thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> or in a Snapple bottle. <laughs> or in a snap. If it, my whiskey for some reason came in a Snapple bottle, it, I think they labeled it wrong. I don't. I, yeah, this is did. Snapple for some reason. I don't know why it says that. It's pretty. But weird. you're accepting Snapple as a sponsor. I'm totally you accepting yeah. Snapple. Yeah. You guys can come on in. I mean, I don't just talk about bourbon on my show. I talk about a lot of things. So Snapple, if you want to sponsor, have no problem with it, and we'll drink it away up here. Oh, I love it. No, I love it. All right, I've got. Matt, a thanks for jumping in on some of that. Yeah, well, it, it's. Um, <laughs> sorry, but I'm walking through the house because the dog was at the window wanting to come outside so i gotta and i can show you how bad my grass is out back too but we won't go there that's amazing this is by the way this is the first ever movement stream that we've ever had on the show matthew for so thank you for the the tour of the yeah, house yeah. we're yeah. we're able to move oh yeah if you'd like, more interesting yeah. fantastic like it. yeah what part yeah where, where would you like to see next uh so just we the, can go into here's the bathroom the, please there's the there's the piano <laughs> there's, oh there's my the god piano room Who's and jamming on the piano, is Matthew? Is that you? Are you playing lullabies at night? No, no, I don't know. How often play. is that piano played? <laughs> and this is the billiard room. Oh, Ooh, look at this. Oh my God. This is this just this show just became the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Heim, nope. your host. Okay. Check yeah. out Matthew's fifty let million dollar home. Let, let me tell you this horrible story. So this is in the right here. This is my uh yes. little section here, okay? So these these glasses that my wife got. Ooh, anyways, so in Talk this fancy crystal, glasses, this crystal thing here, right? It's supposed Ooh. to. It was. It was full. I had the McCallum eighteen in there, and some friends came over, and they they were playing pool and stuff like that. And then the next thing I know, they're toss. They're hitting the 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 McCallum eighteen, thinking it's just like you know, Johnny Walker or something. And I'm sure. like, I'm like. By the end of the evening, it was all gone. We were jamming the <laughs> piano. Nobody plays the piano. We had a concert going on. <laughs> it's just there. The piano's just, just there, there in the room. It's yeah. just there. But now, now, there. now I've uh, now I've lost all my McAllen eighteen. So, oh, so oh. mental note: oh, it will never go in there again. <laughs> oh my god! That's where the safe comes in handy, right, Derek? Is there a whiskey safe somewhere that you that you have no. there in the house? No, no? there's no safe. Just have I, them all out I, open. I, yeah, I don't mind like sharing some with friends. I think that's like part of the um it's, it's like part of the fun to me at least there are a couple bottles that i may be like yeah let's take it easy on it um <laughs> like your like your mccallan 18 incident here where <laughs> yeah, i may say slow let's, down. you know let, let's let, let's just let's put this away but yeah. for the most part if if the bottle's open it's pretty much fair game go ahead um and all about like folks trying stuff that they haven't had um and that's to me that's that's part of it but yeah to your point i there's a couple bottles here where i would probably be like god why did why did i open that and now it's gone because yeah. i'm not i'm not going to see it again type of thing. well i think it's i think it's also about like the appreciation right if they're just out to kind of get hammered well you know what there's yeah. 
plenty of, plenty of uh, Jack Daniels available for you. So yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. don't touch the big stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. Jack yep. Daniels with margarita mix is how I used to roll people. There you, there go. you go. Just so there you know. know. I don't remember so what they used I, to call that. So oh, how did so the, how, Derek, how did how did you get started on this whole process of like, all right, so straight lines, like, you know, you cut lawns and you make them absolutely immaculate, which by the way, you're going to have to come down here from Michigan and <sighs> see if you can fix this crap going on here. <laughs> but, um, but with that, then how, how did you kind of evolve into this? Hey, straight lines and bourbon, like uh, yeah. other than maybe just getting drunk on the lawnmower. Like, is that kind of how <laughs> he's like, there it is. That you, yeah, you right? get it. <laughs> no. So I, like, I, I've always had, like uh i've always been drawn to bourbon and i would say you know through college i would drink like maker's mark was pretty pretty standard for me sure um every once in a while i'd see like something maybe a little higher than that that i would reach to i, I don't even recall but i can remember drinking maker's mark quite a bit um and then i went through like a wine and a beer phase when um kind of post post college and then i just kind of found my way back to bourbon um drinking more so like a buffalo trace and then eel rare eel rare is like it's a 10 year from from buffalo trace and uh it's should be around like 30 bucks but matt to your points like now you can't even find it um, yeah and it's going it's like double the price usually yeah. now 50 to 60 and it's like hold on a second Wow. Um, so from, so that's kind of where I started. And then, um, I didn't have a huge collection. A buddy of mine did. So I would go see him. We we're good friends. So I wasn't going just for the bourbon, but his kids and my kids were about the same age. So we'd hang out, we'd, we'd toss a couple back and he ended up moving to North Carolina, um, a couple years ago. And so I just didn't have access to some of the bottles that he had that i liked and so i was like all right i, I need to figure out like kind of what else is out there because i knew I, I mean i knew like just going to like my local supermarket and like the selection was below average i mean they did have some of the the, the bigger brands that we've talked about but like what else is out there so i'm legit like kind of following a couple people um that were bigger accounts like like heavy bourbon his name is dan kidd he he was out there. Heavy bourbon comes to the show. Heavy bourbon. He was one of the ones that I'd like first followed, and like I'd I'd start like looking at who he was following and starting to follow them. This is all on my own personal account, by the way. So I hadn't even created straight lines and bourbon. So I'm like, why don't I like just dedicate a whole bunch of likes and follows to a separate page of mine, and I can post things that I wouldn't post on my personal account like you're drinking or me mowing yards. Cause I was like, I, I really just wanted to like be around folks that had like interests. And so sure. like, they're going to appreciate me mowing my yard. They're going to appreciate this bottle of bourbon versus like my local friends who may or may not. So I was sitting on the, I was legit sitting on the lawnmower one day and just like kind of thinking, all right, I, what, what do I want to do? How do I want to start this out? And straight lines and bourbon i it just it popped into my head and i i don't know why but it just did and created the handle like i said it was like september 10th two years ago i created the handle and posted my first picture of me sitting out back with like a rock glass with ice in it and i don't even know what was in it probably it was probably like buffalo trace and like a picture of my yard but it wasn't it was like the wrong angle. It's like one of my first pictures that's out there. It's just like, here we go. And then from there, I just started connecting with connecting with folks. And two years later, it kind of grew to what it is. And it's been pretty cool, to be honest with you. That's awesome. So what, what, cool. plat, what, what platform do you think was best for you? Because I think you're, you're also on TikTok. You're, you're mm. also you know on Instagram. And then are you on Twitch as well or – I'm not, not on Twitch, although this is very interesting and maybe I need to be. Um, but yeah, first came Instagram and then, which I thought, I personally, I think is, is the best for connecting with like real people. Yeah. Um, from there, I, I just connect, I made a Facebook page and connected it. It's under the same handle, straight lines and bourbon. Um, obviously the TikTok, um, my handle is slightly different because it's too long for TikTok. 
but mm-hmm. it's, it's t- just type in straight lines and bourbon. I'll come up. I'm not over there often, <laughs> but I'll post. TikTok, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll post my like, I'll post my videos over on TikTok, yeah. and um, I've, I mean, I follow folks over there for sure. I'm not as active um, on TikTok. I'm predominantly on Instagram at this point. Well, and you know, I find like TikTok's a little bit, it, it, the gray hair, I'm only 21, but you know, I'm not familiar with how like some of these social media platforms work, but I got on TikTok uh, and I posted my wife uh, on TikTok uh, of a hidden bar that we found in Arizona. Yeah, that was cool. I saw and, that. And, and so I just, we were in Arizona and I, I put it out there and I woke up and I was like, babe, you just have a half a million hits overnight. And so she ended up, so now she 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 got a, a, a about 1.9 million. And wow. I was like, I was like, what the heck? So then I started posting more stuff. Yeah. Nobody else liked any other thing else I posted, you know, like it was just like, I was it's like, All so right, maybe, it, maybe it's just because my wife's hot. So maybe that's why they were looking. So then I started posting more of her. And still, you know, it, I, I wasn't getting, I think the next one was maybe 6,000, which is like, uh, I posted on there, what's the most expensive thing you own? And then I panned over to her. Uh, uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> so, it, it is funny. Yeah, it, 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 she yeah. Is funny. it's funny. But, um, oh, gosh. So, so kind of what, what do you, what's your objective? Like, I, I, you like connecting with people that have similar, you know, mm-hmm. it's similar to college, right? You go to college and you end up, you know, meeting lifelong friends because they have similar interests. Yeah. So is that kind of your objective or are you looking at kind of taking this a little bit further? It, it, initially, it was just to learn more about bourbon and mm. spirits, honestly. And I, I got into some tequila out of this journey as well. And I'm, okay. oh, I'm open to like everything, by the way, like scotch. I mean, there's just so much. How can you try yeah. it all? But if I can try right. like like, you know, little subsects of each spirit, it'd be fantastic. Um, So that was my initial objective. I I really don't have anything outside of that's different other than to connect with people of uh, like-minded interests, have conversations like this. Um, I tried to do some like merch, like you can see my hat. I'm just so bad at like doing that. So if anybody's on Twitch that can help me out with that, setting it up. Yeah. I'd be, yeah, right. I'd be very interested. Like I, I tried to do like a, um, like a Shopify store, but then I'm like, oh shit, I gotta pay like a hundred bucks a year for this. I was like, yeah. I really just want folks to like have access to like my yeah. logo, and they want to buy a white T-shirt with a black logo or something like this from, from, uh, um, uh, from Tilted Farmhouse. Go ahead. Like, yeah. Um, do you have yeah. a Do you have a website, Derek? I don't. It's just oh, it's just on, it's just on here. Yeah. So that'd be the first step, probably the website. And if, if, if you don't want to go that far, you can actually just do Etsy too. I, I, just, use, Etsy. I just use Etsy. Yeah. yeah I use Etsy okay. for my stuff because it, it's, yeah. you don't pay unless you sell basically okay. is the Etsy thing. And the good thing about it, what I like about Etsy is that they don't, they take care of all the taxes because that's the biggest problem with e-commerce mm-hmm. right now is okay. that you have to track your taxes. The only way you oh, can wow. do that is by using this other, um, this other yeah. website, which costs them 99 something dollars a month. But if you d- use Etsy, they handle all the state taxes and everything, depending no okay. matter what state you're selling into. So yeah, like I'm that. just like, I'm not necessarily in it to make money. That wasn't like back to the objective, but like I've been asked cause I went on to like print, like a print on demand type of thing and made the hat and made one and I made a shirt, I made one at the time. But I've like, I can go like buy some more cause the logo is loaded there. So I just like click buy, but. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer not to do that work. Like if somebody legit wants to buy a shirt, just buy it. I'm not here to make money off of it or anything like Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I use a lot of that the print on demand. Well, yeah. and that's really cool because even like Ray started the same way, right? Like, I mean, you just, you, you love food mm-hmm. and then you started doing this type of, you know, connecting with people and then there's a synergy with other people connecting. And I, I think it's fan, you know, fantastic. We live in a, an amazing time right now where you can connect with people all over the world with similar likes and, and things like that. Um, but so you, you started doing lawns and that's what, that's your primary. So you own your own lawn company. Is that what it is? I don't, I don't, oh, I you care don't. for my own, I care for my own lawn and that's it. <laughs> Looks what? like you into lawn care. I'm like, no, I care for my own lawn. That's it. No, I don't. I get out of here. I thought you had a lawn company too. 
Nope. Shoot. Okay. All right. I know. Everybody's there thinking go. I'm doing. I'm. Everybody's thinking I'm doing lines, and I own a lawn care company. It couldn't be. <laughs> well, You're only doing well, yours. Well, yeah. Well, maybe well, you, you should. I mean, that's a great. We'll start with my lawn. That's where we're going to start. Yeah. Stand there, there we go. <laughs> Got a customer. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it. It would be something I would love to get into maybe one day. It's just not. A, well, not I, in I the do cards have to right say now. that. Uh, I, I did watch one of your videos this morning about uh, you had these these short cutoff shorts and this hat. And, oh uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you're going to come do my lawn, please don't ever wear that. I mean, <laughs> there you go. No, I I connected with a guy. His name is um, I think it's called I Want to Mow Your Lawn. He's he's like a nonprofit. He's been on like the Today Show. Um, in, wow. What? Like like he like what he does is I, I I believe the story is maybe you should have him on to tell it, but. I believe the story is like he either left his job, lost his job or something. But anyways, he wanted to do something. And um, I want to mow your lawn and I'm probably going to botch the story here is he goes around and like mows yards for like elderly or disabled folks. I've heard of this guy. I actually have heard of this guy. But yeah, but then you like log into his website and like, like myself, I could like do it in the southwest michigan area but um, i got i got one of his shirts i got one of his shirts and that was the video you're referring to and yeah i had like the the new balance dad shoes on and yeah like my cut off really short <laughs> shorts from an old <laughs> pair of jeans new balance is a in. great shoe brand by the way yeah so like that's, that's new balance kind of where it was born but no i connected with him like a year ago he's a he's a cool dude man and what he's doing is fantastic but i probably so, botched the story you need to have him on to talk to no me. i'll show the screen right now i'll show you guys i'll show you him uh yeah. i want to mow your lawn a non-profit from uh instagram here is his instagram page and he has been on fox news abc news cnn cbs the drew show yep. usa today lawn mowing for elderly folks i've seen this guy do his thing man i've seen him he's freaking fantastic he'll mow, i mean what i liked about his story is like you said he he wanted to mow lawns specifically for people that just can't do it themselves i mean you got this this guy right here yeah. you know he ain't mowing any lawns any soon he looks like me so he's got he so he's gonna he's gonna mow your lawn for you and probably do it for a great price. He's doing it for veterans, as you can see here, U.S. Navy, yeah. U.S. Marine Corps, doing it for all that stuff. It's freaking yeah. awesome. It's really and cool. And that might not even be the guy. That might be just somebody that logged into – I don't think that was him, but like that was probably somebody that, that was is his part picture. of the group. Like That's like part of the donation, like mowing <clears throat> people's yards. is like like That's what it is. We oh, like a, shirt and like, a bunch of people. Like that may have been that may have been just somebody different, like in somewhere else in the country. I don't think that was him. I could be wrong though. Crazy, crazy. But yeah, these, well, that's like, cool. These Go are, out and mow people, like, old people's lawns. That's what we're saying right now. Yeah, yeah. help help the old people. Tell you what. Yeah. Now Go you, fix you have a, lawn. Yeah, somebody fix mine, please. <laughs> um, you have a um, a link though with a charity on your on your page. Is that your charity or is it what what is that? No, I don't think I don't. I, I think you're referring to uh, Spirit Animal Society. Yes, it's it, just a, yeah, yeah it, it's just a, a bourbon group. It's open to all. Like you guys oh. are welcome to join. Um, it's just a it's just a group of bourbon people that. But it's a non for profit. Are, um, I think the guy. The, there's three people. There's three people involved that are like the heads, and they do pick like barrel picks. Um, okay. And he's bringing it up. They do like barrel picks and like they share it with the community. And frankly, I don't know. I don't necessarily know where the, the, the dollars go to after like the barrel pick, if they do go to some type of donation or, or things like that. But okay. uh, I'm connected. I'm connected with many, many of these folks on here. It's That's awesome. Uh, there, a lot That's of them are great cool. people. Yeah. A lot but of isn't it, people. isn't it, isn't it cool? Like you take something that you're passionate about just in general as a pastime and all of a sudden you find more and more people that are also have that same passion and then you guys get to share about it and talk about it and you know yep. and explore and even educate to a degree like you get to educate people on uh things that you know like uh, one of my buddies that i i said earlier follows you um whiskey pilot he mm -hmm. uh he's actually a he was a pilot for the air force he's still mm -hmm. in the air force and um he just loves whiskey and him and i traveled to europe together and um i wasn't really drinking whiskey at the time and and then he kind of cultivated this like 
appreciation for it. And then he was sharing with me about the sherry casts and how important sherry is to the whiskey industry, especially scotch. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so he really did kind of his research, which is beyond what I want to do. I just want to drink it, enjoy it. And, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not out for, a, I'm not out for a buzz. I'm more, you know, out for just the taste and, and the, uh, the appreciation for all that goes into it. Um, yes. because it, 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 there's so much, so much that goes into it, um, time and, and all that. Yeah. That's, is that whiskey? That's probably not him, but I'm just, <laughs> I just saw whiskey <laughs> pilot. Just, yeah, whiskey yeah. pilot. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not him. It was like a married whoa. couple playing guitars and like, it was, I was like, oh, you, you got to see this. This is better. <laughs> <laughs> not him, not him. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's it was just really cool and when we i met him he lives in orlando now and uh and he started talking to me and i was like god i i feel so uneducated with all that goes into it and it sounds like you've really evolved like your knowledge of so it's not just drinking now you kind of got into the whole like uh learning about it and the all the the history behind it and different things like you were saying earlier but not buying certain ones just because of the cap, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would say, I would say, yes. I would say there are folks out there that are extremely knowledgeable about this. I'm probably on the other end of the spectrum. We were talking earlier prior to this and like, I, I just kind of enjoy drinking, um, enjoy drinking it. Um, I enjoy drinking. So I, I could, I enjoy drinking, um, <laughs> but no, like I'm doing lines by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm doing lines. Yeah. But uh, lawns, lawns, lawns. No, I could probably, I could probably expand <laughs> my knowledge in terms of like how it's made, the history of it. And we were asking about different flavor profiles and different grains. I, I mean, I, I like the stuff, but frankly, I, I like connecting with people over bourbon. The, the how it's made, the how it's done is, yeah, it'd be nice to know. And as far as like expert wise, I anybody was like, hey, do you think this is good or bad? I'd be like, I've had it before and I like it. Or I haven't had it before, but I'd try it. That's really yeah. kind of how how it goes. Yeah, and, and you're you're accepting you know free tours of of different bourbon places. Um, so if anybody wants to give him a free tour, and and he'll bring his uh, he'll yeah. bring his phone and go live, <laughs> right? Uh, and, <laughs> and promote, right? But uh, yeah, I think that that's that's maybe that's what we just all need to do. Let's just quit our day jobs and just uh, drink, and and we'll use social media as a uh, uh, the catalyst. Oh you know, wouldn't that be great? Derek's yeah, doing it. Dude, Derek's doing it at that level. Oh, well, all right. So, all right. Then, then sorry. Not monetized. You, you need to, yeah, you, you need to help me to get at that level then because that, that's fantastic. Not monetized. Matthew's doing it, but he's not getting paid for it. That's the only thing. No, I'm not. I'm not getting paid at all. I, 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 I'm paying them. And, and the crazy part too that I find when you go to different bars, I actually will test like, uh, so I've the cheapest Johnny Walker black label because it's pretty easy to get. It's a blend. But I'll pay the lowest I've ever paid is six bucks. The highest I paid is fifteen, and I'm like, just the variation between different places uh, is is insane. Um, when you know it's how much is the bottle? It's not that expensive, and you shouldn't be <laughs> overcharging. But so it's even interesting with that. And like Woodford, I've got to ask you though, Woodford Reserve, what do you think as a bourbon? I personally love their double oak. I did a okay. pick with one of the local local stores, and their double oaked to me is fantastic. I do have a um, what do I have over there? Woodford Masters Collection. It's like 128 proof. It is it is so hot. It is so hot when you drink it. It's um, mm. it's almost it's almost too it's almost too hot for my palate to be honest with you. So now when you say but, hot, what do you what do you mean by hot? Are you talking Yeah, like, is it like uh, buffalo wings or what? Just like the all right, so you, you drink a bourbon, it's like it burns. Like it's hot. It burns on the back right, end. Right, right, it's like a, right. It's like a it's like a long burn for me. Which isn't mm. bad. It's not bad. No. It's just for me, I didn't like care for that at the moment. Now I will say this. I've opened, there are very few bottles with, that I dislike, very few. Typically, I'll like them right out, right out of the cork pop. If I find that it's not to um, what I'm looking for, I'll come back to it like a month or two later. And okay. if it's still not there, 
I'll, the next time I come back to it, I'll put a couple drops of, of water into it. And if it, if, if that doesn't do it, then, then I, I, I can't help it. <laughs> like, it's like, right, right. Right. <laughs> then it's just something that I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, vibe with. So for me, so, that's. So what, so what would you say is your number one? Like I said, for mine, my default is McAllen 18. What would your go-to best value, best taste? What would that be for you? So that's a tough one. Um, there's there's many of them, and sometimes it's affected by my mood or time of season. But I've generally come back to a couple a couple of them. Blue Run has been one of them, uh, which I actually happen to be drinking at the moment. Blue Run. Boom. So Blue Run. Gone. Um, I've been a huge fan of of them and what they do. Um, Smoke Wagon would be another bottle that i enjoy the uncut unfiltered i just got their rye actually the other day um like those would be like the two that i would say that i would would that you would find me drinking a lot most often but as you see behind me i have i have many of them and each is there's some back here that I, i like because of the experience that i had with other people and when i drink it i remember the experience that I had. And usually it's a good, it's generally a good time with friends that I've had. It. Wow. So like that bottle has got to be on my shelf type of thing. Yeah. I, I don't see any tequila on the shelf. So there must be some bad memories with tequila. No, 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 no. I got a G4 <laughs> sitting right here. Oh, you got it. There you go. Some good, good tequila memories. Got a G4 right here. Whoa. Holy um, moly. But I connected with, uh, a couple tequila folks, um, tequila encyclopedia. She's out of, she's on the East coast and the tequila, I think it's the tequila ladies. I think that's what they're called. They do like a, they do a live every Tuesday. Yeah. Um, There's a whole community of tequila people, just like yourself on the tequila side. Chops is all involved in that too. So I messaged them. I'm like, Hey, I've, you know, I've this interest. Can you give me some recommendations? They shot over a list and, I tried to go acquire some of them. No, I don't think I'm going to expand like my tequila selection. No, you're the uh, bourbon guy, bro. You, you can't. You I can't do have a. Room. I do have. I do have a potential tequila page in mind. Uh, Ooh, you may see. You may you heard see it in first the on raceflaves.com. <laughs> you may see it in the future. Um, I'll keep the handle to myself at the moment. Nice it's not created, but uh, yeah. Because like the 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 tequila like this was the blanco. Then you have the añejo and reposado, and those are all aged in bourbon barrels. No way! Kind That's of the link, bro. With like the darker tequila. Yeah, That's crazy, so man. We are over time here. I, I promised the, all the wives that I'd get you guys out of the virtual man cave at a certain time. And we went a little bit over, so we might all be in trouble, but it was worth it. My man, uh, Derek, we have time for one more question though. Here's one qu- And this is a great question for M- Ramonski. He says, what comes first, the straight line or the bourbon? Because I don't oh think you can <laughs> cut the straight lines if you drink the bourbon first, right? Oh, so straight lines first. Well, I mean, you got the zero turn. So I generally have two hands on the on the sticks although i can do it with one um what comes first um god if i if my yard looked like if it looked like like mine i would it it would i would drive it would drive me nuts it really would (laughs) um so although i although i probably don't post enough pictures of my yard i i would go nuts so probably the the straight lines would come first and i'd finish it off with the bourbon at that point that is awesome. What's the link to the? Can, how do can people buy your shirts? Where 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 do we buy your shirts at? I saw like maybe you put a link in there. Like like I said, I use print uh, Printful, but like I oh, don't you have do. anything. I don't have anything official out there. So if like somebody wants to help me out, that's. But it has to go to some, like if you use Printful, it has to go somewhere. Doesn't it go to your website or something? I like it. I oh, guess. you or oh, you're doing it. You're ordering them. You're doing the like, one do order it. thing. And then yeah, they I just come to the you order off. and then you get yeah. to them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just do okay. One off. But I, yeah, I mean, I th- may- maybe you can use it. I don't know. It's a good question. No, we'll, jump no. in my DMs. Somebody help me out here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll help you with Etsy. that. We'll help you with that off screen. That's, that's what we do. Um, that's going to be easy. Crazy, crazy. My friend, 
Derek, Straight Lines and Bourbon, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Amazing the way you talk about bourbon. It's a passion of yours. My show is about passion. You brought the passion about bourbon. The way you talk about it, you can tell the passion that you have for it. I don't think anybody I know can talk about bourbon like you. Very interesting the way you talk about it. I also want to thank Matthew, the jeweler, Canadian aristocrat. Thank God you came on this morning, brother. I have no idea. Yes, this is way out of my scope. Dude, he, <laughs> he did a great job, right? Everybody just, let's give this guy yes. a applause. My God. Good. Great job, Matthew. Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Absolutely. you. Come again, please. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everybody in the stream. Thank you for joining us on Twitch. Fantastic. Uh, Ramon, thanks again for that raid, brother. Get bringing in all the girls, bringing in all the friends. Thanks, everybody, for watching uh, this Twitch stream, twitch.tv forward slash raise plays. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and go to my Patreon page. That's patreon.com forward slash raise flaves. Get a little uh, patreon level there and number one just thank you for joining the show and we will see you soon